The I Madiba project is a global art project that celebrates the legacy of Nelson Mandela. We're going to have an important conversation around education because Sanlam, a key supporter of the I Madiba project, allows us to have macro conversations in these micro spaces. I'm about to introduce you to the panel who's going to help me really unpack an important topic around education and preparing our kids for the future job. But first, let's meet the artist, Ehart Thiel. Erat, tell us how the Aymadiba project and the micro-museums are going to be used as a catalyst for conversation. I conceived the idea to try and get new conversations going. This little museum, the micro-museums as we call them, uh, is a conversation station. I'm planning to put as many of them down on the planet as possible and then linking them together. I'm doing it in partnership and in support of the Mandela Foundation to get those conversations for the change that must still happen going. The reality is education will always be the game changer. If we want to fix this country and have a prosperous future for future generations, education is going to be a key player without a doubt. We need to get that right. Here we have four amazing individuals who have some great ideas of what, what we need to be thinking about, what we need to be implementing right now to start preparing our kids for the future. Do we have an appreciation of what the future job is going to be and therefore are we starting to prepare our young kids, our learners, our students for that job? I think if you look at the conversations that are happening globally about the fourth industrial revolutions, there seems to be an awareness and a conversations about what we need to do to prepare our kids to be ready to deal with future careers. But if you look at what happens within the nucleus of the home and where kids interact with ordinary human beings, not necessarily. And I think as a parent, for example, you are more focused in you're getting your children to behave well and getting them to pass and you know progress to the next grade. You're not necessarily thinking about what it is that I need to prepare them to get there because you're dealing with the daily hassles of daily life. But I think more importantly within my field exactly, it's about how you stimulate the child to think outside of the box, to think creatively, also how they develop the emotional resilience to deal with whatever life throws at them so that they are able to have cognitive flexibility but also to be able to solve problems without relying on ready-made solutions. And when we do that, we get them to get prepared and we expose them to situations that will expand in that way. So the biggest thing for me is the role of the parent in, in as part of the stakeholder in make sure you develop this child. I mean we can have these things in schools but if the parents are not involved in, in, in contributing and make sure you instill the right values, the right culture, the outputs you get at, at, at school are not going to help. How important has the support of your parents and your extended family been to your success? I mean, I'm glad somebody brought that up because I think for me personally, having parents that have been supportive of um, things like research and things like innovation have been extremely important in my life. And I think that's what's essential to getting people, um, kids especially, involved in innovation and the fourth industrial revolution. When you don't have these strong people to look at, these mentors, it makes all these things very much more difficult. High school kids think they know what they want, but Really, they don't, do they? The new graduates that come to the work environment, they not often work ready. So what you find, they, they book ready, because they studied, they've qualified, and the skills that you need in a corporate environment becomes quite a clearing gap. I mean, for instance, things like, um, you know, assimilation of information, you know, logic instruction, you know, to make sure you understand what you're saying, um, report writing skills, those things are often quite lacking. So I think for me the big challenge is these things need to be brought in at foundation level and high school level. We need to almost systematically think as a country and say what kind of skill sets we need for the economy. The work that is being done at, at foundation phase level at primary school is very, very important because they need to match up to the demand, the rigor, uh, that is needed and required at university, for example, or other higher education institutions. So the curriculum that is being offered at basic education needs to always be refined so that our learners, when they get to university, they are able to sort of be harnessed and chiseled in a way that when they graduate, they are work ready. Is 
the academic qualification attained through a three-year, four-year degree program at university is still the way that we're going to be acquiring knowledge? Or am I going to go into a market and go, I need a skill now to be able to steer that ship from there to there. Here's a short course I can take, master it, and then just go out and actually Definitely. When a person it. knows what they want, they may just have to take one course to sharpen that particular skill, even for a year, and then they just move into the profession, uh, or even not, because some uh, professions you just need the experience. There is no other way to learn until you actually get your hands dirty. And if we push our curriculum to help our learners understand that from an early age, by the time they finish matric, they are writing business plans, they are having those opportunities to, to develop businesses because that's what our country needs. And of course, Kiara, the president would be happy that this is a working harbour where you're getting a lot of construction in the background and boats that are sailing past. What advice would you offer him and his administration for preparing the young learner for a future job? Well, I think the suggestions that they have currently are on the right track. We're at this position where over 80% of the jobs we know now are not going to be jobs in 20 years. So equipping our students with the necessary skills to allow them to get those jobs in the future is absolutely necessary. I think there's a fine line to tread between how do we teach the kids things like coding and artificial intelligence but still get them the, get them the correct skills to still live in the moment. And I think finding that correct balance is essential. Yeah. Yeah. And Sepiso, what me, advice would you offer him? So early childhood development becomes very important. The second one for me is the salaries of teachers. Uh, we need teachers who are motivated, who are happy, who feel valued, because if they're not, they not feeling taken care of, they're not gonna show that love and care on the kids that they're teaching. The last one is indigenous knowledge systems. We are in Africa. It's the most exciting place to be in. Everything that we have around us belongs to us. We keep looking at outside and third and first world countries to develop what it is that we need to do in terms of our education and, and economies, and we borrow. What about cultivating care? Make our young people understand that we've got a lot of wealth. How can they develop industries? And then using vocation-oriented training to cultivate the science and the technology and whatever innovations you need, given what we have at home. Let's stop looking to the West to determine where we are going. Let's look at what we have here. What conversations are you having? We invite you to come and be at the IMADIBA project and have these conversations. And who knows, collectively, we could create a brighter future for our kids.